Man, we really don't get over this economic collapse stuff now, do we? And when the UK makes it to the lot, you know that you've got a global pattern emerging here. The crisis seems almost certain, and the current political turmoil in England really doesn't help. But hang tight, because by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly why the UK is on the brink of recession and how it will affect the rest of the world. I'll reveal how the new policies set by ex-Prime Minister Liz Truss are affecting the situation, even after she's gone, why the UK is in more trouble than anticipated, how the current high-cost crises are piling up, and why the Bank of England is constantly issuing warnings about material risk. Here are four reasons why the UK economy might be headed for a collapse. Reason number one. New policies set forward by Liz Truss. Liz Truss, as Prime Minister for less than two months, wanted to make a fresh start for the country's economy. But Britain's economy looked set to go into a recession, as it does right now. The data showed that the economy suddenly shrank in August, highlighting a challenge for the PM to make good on her promises to speed up the growth. High energy prices, elevated inflation, rising interest rates, and global economic weakness signifies that the economy is expected to be in recession. So what are the possibilities of an upcoming recession in the British economy, and how will the new Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, handle it? Stay with me until the end if you want to know whether the UK can prevent this major recession from happening. First impressions count, especially when it comes to economic policy. Liz Truss, who rose as the fourth Prime Minister in Downing Street in six turbulent years and has now been replaced by Rishi Sunak, and her finance minister, Kwasi Kwarteng, who was dismissed only 38 days after assuming office, announced a fresh start for the country with a big shift in fiscal policy. And they hit the ground face first. Their plan has crashed the pound, wrecked the government bond market, and destroyed the Bank of England's efforts to tighten monetary policy. It's the very definition of disaster capitalism. The recession recipe seems almost complete, doesn't it? Truss, in her short tenure, was burdened by a mountain of challenges that could be a colossal task for any leader to overcome. The population was, and still is, under her successor, groaning under rising energy prices and inflation hitting double digits. And according to forecasts, the country is in danger of slipping into a recession. In fact, Sunak just recently publicly admitted that the country faces a profound economic crisis. Added to this are foreign policy challenges such as post-Brexit complications, the war in Ukraine, and dealing with China. This time, it could be too much to handle. By the way, do you want to stay updated about the UK economy? Then give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It really helps me to grow the channel and bring you the best content about global finance. Moving back to the topic, although Truss mentioned her intention to make the country a nation with big goals, 49 days later, it was obvious that she herself failed to survive the political winter, and now her successor faces a divided parliament as only one of the various challenges that lay ahead. After such a disastrous episode, repairing the damage might be beyond the new prime minister, at least in the short term. For instance, while in power, Truss was forced to confirm a humiliating reversal on her low-tax vision for Britain. She instead proclaimed that she would formulate a plan to freeze corporation tax next year. But by leaving her other tax cuts in place, Truss has laid the ground for more market turmoil as traders consume what Bloomberg Economics estimates is an additional £24 billion of savings that the government, now under Sunak, needs to find to get public finances on a sustainable footing. Truss's brittle, at times belligerent, televised performance in announcing such economic U-turns may have been even more damaging. Far from strengthening her hand, it left Tory MPs in despair. The UK faces numerous challenges, any one of which would strain the most competent of governments and risk scaring investors. The Truss administration appeared untested in economic affairs. And it hasn't been quite long enough since Sunak's appointment as the new PM to see where his commitment to fiscal orthodoxy will take the UK after an extended period of political turmoil. Reason number two. The UK is in more pitfalls than anticipated. Britain's inflation problem is more serious than most because of the economy's unusually heavy dependence on gas. And the UK economy is uniquely burdened by the immediate impact and unfinished business of Brexit. A little reassurance was therefore indicated. 
Truss needed to show she understood the gravity of these problems and would work towards solving them. That would have been challenging, no doubt because it meant turning her attention away from the excitable Conservative Party members who elected her and addressing everybody else. Especially investors, who from time to time hold the fate of governments in their hands. Instead of offering reassurance, she stuck with campaigning. UK inflation burst through the double-figure mark once again, with a reading of 10.1% in the year to September 2022, according to the Office for National Statistics. The latest rise in the Consumer Prices Index, from a figure of 9.9% recorded in the 12 months to August, means that inflation is at the same level as July, dashing hopes that rising prices were starting to tail off. September's CPI reading is important, because it's one of the three measures used by the government, alongside wage growth and minimum uplift rate of 2.5%, to determine the pension triple lock guarantee. Now, assuming the government sticks to the triple lock arrangement, today's figure, which is the largest of the three measures, means that the state pensions will rise by 10.1% from the start of the tax year next April. However, there are several reports that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor will break the pledge to use the highest of the three figures given that the inflation is so high. So Liz Truss and Kuateng ostentatiously set aside the immediate economic challenges and presented a plan that put heavy stress on the long term. But keep this in mind, tax cuts and fiscal incentives to promote investment and enterprise are all well and good if they're intelligently designed. But for now, long-term growth prospects are mostly beside the point. As if to underline her contempt for fiscal orthodoxy, she also deferred the procedure for letting the Office for Budget Responsibility, Britain's independent fiscal watchdog, review the proposal. Her budget compounded the short-term challenges by cutting across the Bank of England's efforts to fight inflation. Additional fiscal stimulus naturally forces the central bank to advance its policy rate even more. Collapsing confidence pushes inflation higher, again calling on the Bank of England to tighten further. And alarm in fiscal markets also raises long-term interest rates, turning attention to the solvency of private debtors, including holders of floating rate mortgages. These surging cross-currents make the central bank's task all but impossible. Amid extraordinary turbulence in financial markets, the Bank of England reversed itself in the space of a day, promising to buy as many long-term government bonds as required to restore order. In effect, resuming the quantitative easing it had been planning to reverse. Reason number three. The UK is under high-cost crises. We hate to throw it all on Truss's shoulders, but hey, during her campaign, Truss had raised questions over the Bank of England's operational independence, saying that its mandate might need to be changed. And she stayed true to her beliefs. Her views on central bank independence were, and perhaps still are, as heterodox as her thinking on independent oversight of the budget. The attention to detail is no less notable. Whatever she could have done to make investors anxious and the Bank of England's job harder, she did. Add all of this together, and investors' alarm over UK prospects no longer looks extreme. But beginnings this bad were hard to reverse. Her resignation was all but inevitable after this point. Staying the course would never have worked, because it was always set for doom. And abrupt U-turns made things much worse. Incompetence plus panic is more frightening than just incompetence. Kuateng had announced a new fiscal policy on September the 23rd, delivering Truss's vision for vast tax cuts and deregulation to try and shock the economy into growth, 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 as they put it. But the response from markets was so ferocious that the Bank of England had to intervene to prevent pension funds from being caught up in the chaos, as borrowing and mortgage costs surged. The duo was under mounting pressure to change course, as polls showed support for her Conservative Party collapsing, prompting colleagues to openly discuss whether the PM should be replaced. So, boxed in by market turmoil and a rebellious Conservative Party, UK Prime Minister Liz Truss was left with two cards to play, hitting reset on her economic plan and firing her friend and finance minister, Kwasi Kwarteng. And she used up both. But this left her in even more peril, Kuateng is now the country's shortest-serving Chancellor of the Exchequer since 1970, and his successor will be the fourth finance minister in as many months in Britain, where millions are facing a cost-of-living crisis. Liz Truss also resigned as Prime Minister just 49 days after taking over from Boris Johnson. 
Just like Kuateng, she is also designated as the shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. And fun fact, she was actually outlived by a head of lettuce. She said in a statement outside 10 Downing Street, we set out a vision for a low-tax, high-growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise now though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to announce that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Rishi Sunak then became Britain's first Indian origin Prime Minister, after winning the race to lead the Conservative Party, tasked with steering a deeply divided country through an economic downturn set to leave millions of people poorer. Reason number four. The Bank of England warns of material risk. Since trust triggered a market route, the new Prime Minister now runs the risk of bringing the government down if he can't find a package of public spending cuts and tax rises that can appease investors and get through any parliamentary vote in the House of Commons. Moreover, the Bank of England is expanding its current bond buying scheme to buy index-linked gilts, which track inflation, warning of the material risk to financial stability. This follows from the dramatic intervention on September 28th, when the bank pledged to buy £65 billion of bonds to calm a dysfunctional market. Again, the bank used the word dysfunction to describe the current volatile conditions. So with all of that in mind, a recession doesn't seem all that far-fetched now, does it? But what do you guys think? Do you think the UK economy is headed for a total collapse? Write UK Collapse in the comments below if you think so. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch our previous video on why the Russian economy is about to collapse. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week where I uncover the secrets of money and markets. Stay tuned for the next upload.